And there's a growing movement to reform to criminal justice policies and reform them here in Arizona and across the country. That includes fair chance policies to help people with a criminal background find a good job and some safe housing. And here to talk about that is Republican member of the State House, Steve Kaiser and Allison Rapping, the CEO of Arrowet Foundation, which advocates for incarcerated women. Thank you both for being here yeah, very thank much. You for and us. I, I guess the big question, uh, I want to start with you, Mr. Kaiser. Uh, how is criminal justice reform, how has this become such a thing over at the legislature for the past several years? Because it's not just you, it's a few other lawmakers Absolutely. have been down there has really taken this on. Yeah, and this is really a bipartisan issue too, which is really exciting. This is an issue that generally gets super majority support in both chambers of our legislature. And I think it's a reflection of everyone knows that you've paid your debt to society, the best way to stay out of prison is to get a job, and it helps folks become prosperous. And what is, what for people just tuning in, seeing this, what is criminal justice reform? You know, we've seen, you know, policies and in, in, in laws and executive orders where you can't ask about someone's criminal you know, justice background. They take the box off of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, off of, uh, uh, you know, during the interview process. Um, what is it? So this is a very small piece of criminal justice reform, but ban the box is really one piece. Fair mm -hmm. chance hiring is much bigger than just ban the box. It's really creating fair chance opportunities for people to come back and be successful. So it's an opportunity for an employer to partner with a nonprofit in the community to provide training, to provide skill building, to provide wraparound services and mentorship. All things that we provide at Arrowet. And what have you seen from the legislature over the past couple of years? Have you seen some successes? Explain those. Yes. So one of the things that we've seen as successes is that legislators are really interested in how they can help. So we have a storytellers program and we have women that we have trained and they speak to legislators all the time just about their needs in the community. And the legislators have been incredibly supportive of them. And I want to talk to you too. We are in a political year. I don't want to get into the whole electoral politics. I think we had enough of that in the first couple of segments here. Uh, but I do want to ask, it's, it's a real thing. Republicans uh, in Arizona, across the country, are running on get tough on crime. Um, they're trying to be the law and order uh, party. Uh, could this complicate efforts on criminal justice reform moving forward next year? Because by all accounts, it appears that the legislature is going to be tilt even more conservative next year. Right, great question. And I think we have to split what we're talking about because being tough on crime is the action of the crime being con committed. And then what we're talking about is what happens after they've served their time. Should they continue to serve the rest of their life or should they get a job, help them get a job? We should be tough on crime because crime is rising in Phoenix. We have 800 short sure. police officers, so we need to be tough on crime. That goes to the county prosecutor. But when they serve their time and they're removed and they've, they've, they've served their debt to society, we should support them in getting a job so that they don't go back to prison. And this is also coming kind of at a time, you know, uh, you know people in your world are talking about, look, we've got a labor shortage in a lot Absolutely. of different areas out there. And you've got a ready labor pool right here. Um, you know, wh why are people so hesitant? Take a, give people a second chance? I think sometimes it's because they have a criminal record, but when you really get to know these people, you will see they are the some of the most industrious, most loyal, and most dedicated employees. They're also very intelligent. Many of them come to prison with a lot of background. And we have a labor shortage. For every two jobs, we only have one available worker. So this is a major crisis. We have 33,000 people in Arizona's prisons right now. We're spending $1.4 billion a year to do this. And 96% of those people are going to come back to our communities. Mm -hmm. So why not ensure that they are ready to work? And hey, Mr. Geiger, you're a small business yep. owner. Um, have you given a second chance? Absolutely, to, yeah. Uh, this, is, this is something that I'm very passionate about because I feel like they've served their debt to society and they come in, they interview, they have a great attitude, they show up on time, they work hard and they're a good team member with other team members, get them on board. And we, one of my favorite uh, team members was named Robert and we picked him up as a, an entry level. He worked his way up to management with us and then I wrote him a letter of recommendation to get that next management job. So he's overseeing a yard right now at a different company and he's just so successful. And that, that really warms my heart because that's what it's all about. He served his debt, he learned his lesson, 
let's give him a job and let's make him prosperous. And that's what he's doing. And what are you going to be pushing for? What are you going to be pushing Mr. Kaiser and his colleagues for uh, when we go back into the legislature well, in January? Really, it's just to open up more opportunities. So there are 44,000 collateral consequences that people have. It can affect their licensing. It can affect their ability to get a job. So there's certain policies that are very easy to change, and we're hoping that they might be willing to change some of those. But most importantly, we're also looking at bringing policymakers and business leaders together to really have this conversation about how we collectively can solve for this problem and get more people back to work. Right, and uh, you've got about less than a minute left, and I do want to give you an opportunity to kind of give, plug yourself. Like, you're, you're doing a big event here uh, pretty soon at the Biltmore. You're trying to, uh, you know, what is this event going to do? What's, why, you know, who's going to be in attendance there? And what do you hope comes out of this? Absolutely. So we are having our first annual Fair Chance Employment Symposium. It's going to be at the Arizona Biltmore Hotel on Friday, this Friday, the 21st. Starts at 8 o'clock in the morning. We, J.P. Morgan Chase is our title sponsor. We have a number of corporate sponsors because many Fortune 100 companies are very interested in this. We're bringing in Jeff Kornizak, who is the nation's leading expert right now on Fair Chance Employment, the author of this book, Untapped Talent. Yeah. And our goal is to have local businesses, local policymakers, and local people who really care about building a robust and inclusive economy for the state of Arizona. Yeah, and you're going to be there yes, as well. You're going to yeah. be bringing any of your colleagues down there to learn a thing or two about yes, this sir. before we Absolutely. get back in there. Uh, all right, well, I'm going to have to uh, end it there. I want to thank you both for being here. Good luck on the event but moving forward. And I'm sure we will be talking more as this election goes on and, uh, you know, when we see you back at the legislature in January. That is all the time we have tonight. But be sure to join us next week for more Politics Unplugged. Good night.